no, you've done a good job on that already. Thanks, Christina, for a very um, stimulating um, and also inspiring presentation. It's good to see how quickly the issue of energy for all is accelerating, particularly on the African continent. So I've got two comments and, and maybe two small uh, issues I'd just like to clarify. So one is, uh, it's, uh, we spoke about the sustainable development goals yesterday, and I see specifically number seven, which speaks to energy for all, is uh, promoted very effectively, and also sustainable development goal number 17, which invites international collaboration to get these goals achieved. So this is a good example of how that's being done. Then I observed that you, the accelerators that you mentioned for the high-performing countries, um, you uh, saw Kenya, I saw Ethiopia, I saw Tanzania, and we are also aware that in 2013 the Power Africa Initiative was launched. So the question I have is, was this growth linked to the Power Africa Initiative or did the Power Africa Initiative essentially add impetus to what was already happening from Power for All? The uh, second bit is more philosophical. You speak about decentralized uh, renewable energy, and we use the same acronym for uh, distributed renewable energy, which is DRE. I'd like you just to say whether you think there's any fundamental philosophical or pragmatic difference, or it's just uh, maybe a, 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 a way of, of capturing what you believe is, is, is your strategy. And then finally, um, is there any way in which Power for All can continue to provide incentives to independent power pro uh, producers mm -hmm. so that we can accelerate this uh, process of empowering people with energy for all? Thank yeah, you. yeah, great questions. Um, I'm an old lady, so I'll do my best to remember those. Um, <laughs> forgive me if I don't remember everything, but um, I, th I think your first question was about Power Africa and what is the effect. And again, I know I'm with academics, so I would never say that one thing causes another. We can just establish correlation. Um, and I will say that this market has been uh, really developing uh, for about 10 years now. Um, very early stages um, in 2006, 2007, when we first started seeing a, a swath of these companies really take flight. Um, so I think anything that helps legitimize the sector and draw attention to our solutions is really helpful. Um, I will say that Power Africa, when it was first launched in 2013, um, did not include what they now call Beyond the Grid. Um, and after a, a few heated phone calls and bits of lobbying um, by yours truly, um, we did begin to see um, this sector included. And now I think what we have are some incredible targets from Power Africa, which will again help to stimulate overall uh, growth. Um, but I think, I think it's difficult for me personally to comment that Power Africa led to you know, growth of this sector. Um, the sector wants to grow itself, um, that's for sure. But again, anything that, that helps legitimize it is, is useful. Um, decentralized versus distributed, I think they're interchangeable. Um, I use them both so nobody gets bored. <laughs> um, and then there was one last question about, I think, PPAs or incentives. Um, so Power for All actually is a campaign. We are not responsible ourselves for any regranting or financing. Um, but that said, and this will be coming out in our paper in about six weeks, um, having a PPA structure in these countries has also been a consistent element across the, the five that we talked about. So uh, keep, and keep your uh, ears, and, uh, ears open and eyes open for the paper with the detailed results in a few weeks, okay? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Other question from? There you go, Carlos, jog a little bit. Urgency, that's what we're trying to establish. <laughs> Human energy. Uh, thank you, thank you a lot for kind of a good companion story. And, and uh, we really need uh, renewable energy. Uh, uh, and I hope I won't take away in the, but in this audience I think we need to be a bit careful also and be a bit reflective. And so I kind of early in the presentation got my black hat on and there is advocate. I hope that is okay. And we don't take away the energy but focus where I think we need it. And it was when you started to make a comparison between uh, Norway and uh, I think it was uh, Sandia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
And uh, I happen to work in Norway, not from here. So it's um, how to say. Uh, it's also a curse when it comes to cheap energy and cheap energy for all. And that is that we get more power, more power to destroy the earth. And it's not only the energy, the energy gives us the power to, to do so much other things that's bad for the earth. So, all this talk about um, the growth and, uh, uh, and having uh, energy demand, which I thought was a bit energy demand and business as usual. Uh, forecasting that all countries should live with kind of energy use uh, as Norway and then they got, yeah, kind of, we try to make the distinction in the high standard of living, but we certainly believe that, also some of us believe that the quality of life is more important and they actually change in order to reach the quality of life uh, and be able to survive, we need, we need to reduce significantly the, the energy we have. And that, that doesn't mean that we, we don't need to renewable energy. We need it a lot, a lot, but, but, but the, the fossil fuel is so, so big and we can't think about reaching that level with the with, uh, be renewable, see if you're not going to destroy the earth in other ways. I hope that was okay to say, uh, because I, uh, otherwise I, I like the, the kind of rolling out uh, in it, uh, of energy, mm. but we also need to have that in mind, I think. Yeah. Thank no, you. it's totally fine to say, and just a quick response, so that chart you're talking about is actually reproduction of something that was har in Harvard Business Review um, uh, from Arun Mujamar, who used to had uh, a U.S. program called ARPA-E, which is meant to be this sort of grand challenge for how we develop energy. We use that, um, and maybe it, I actually didn't even need to use that for this audience, but it's to really illustrate the point of how just a little bit of energy makes a difference. One of the challenges we deal with as Power for All is the idea that everybody, to your point, um, you know, expects, especially in the developed world, thinks that we need to have the same amount of energy for everybody in the world. But in fact, that's not our argument. We're trying to really respect the consumers um, and understand the level of energy that they use. So that's really uh, the argument there. But I appreciate you bringing that up. I don't disagree with you. Um, and uh, we use that mostly for illustrative purposes so people can understand that, you know, if you can just get enough energy which is a standard tier two system in the global tracking framework that SE for All proposes to charge a mobile phone, have some lights, you see a very quick rise in HDI index. So thank you for the point um, very much. Who was the first? The closest. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Silvia Mili, I'm a researcher at Brunel University in London and part of the Lenses project. Um, I just wanted to know if at Powerful do you also do uh, research about business models and what worked in specific countries and try to um, understand like what lessons, lessons learned could be shared with, uh, with the companies that are involved in your campaign? Yeah, sure. Um, well, so uh, I mentioned uh, earlier that we have a research director. Um, so uh, she's housed at uh, UC Berkeley. Um, and, and it's part of a project we call PEAK, which is the Platform for Energy Access Knowledge. The goal of PEAK is not necessarily to do a ton of original research, because there's a ton of information already out there on this sector, but it's not pulled together in any way that um, either the sector, individual companies, CSOs can use to explain to governments in a clear, coherent way what works and what doesn't, um, as well as educate media and do those other influencing tactics that we talked about. So our focus is really evidence curation. Um, that said, a number of our companies um, I would be happy to talk about um, how they work and what they do. Um, there's certainly at this point a range of approaches in business models. 
And from the Power for All perspective, we're very much uh, technology neutral and business model neutral. We think that the market will tell us um, and that consumers have a, cho a choice themselves to decide. Um, but I'm certainly happy to talk with you after this about some of the business models, or you can speak to Don Tice, who's right there, who uh, is an energy investor and ran a company for uh, a number of years called D-Light, one of the leaders in the space to talk about business models. So. from CPUT. Thank you, Christina. That was very interesting. Um, just to maybe latch on to what Hawkins said, we were just discussing um, the little word that was maybe missing in the presentation, and that is responsible um, energy usage. Um, those high targets, um, westernized targets, look a lot like um, overconsumption can happen of energy and um, wastage of energy. And in fact, we mustn't forget that energy is precious. Um, as is oil, as is coal, and I think the, the responsibility factor and the educational factor of how energy ought to be used must um, be uppermost. And um, I think that, you know, also a bit of a devil's advocate, but in life energy isn't all, we need it, yes, but um, we have to build in that um, equation uh, things like ethics, responsibility, going slow and not going faster and all those things. And I think maybe the, what can I call it, the more philosophical aspects of your presentation um, I felt was lacking a bit. Not criticism, just an observation. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for the audience. Sure. She's still here for a while. <laughs> I'll be around today, so if people want to check okay. with me later, they can. No problem. Take so again, thanks, thanks, thanks a lot to Christine. Oh, oh, oh. Whether the, Thank you. the publication with the results that you've promised is going to be open source, copy left, or is it proprietary? <laughs> Um, I, I don't really know what that means, copy left exactly, but... Copy left is the opposite of uh, copyright, I will tell you later a bit more. <laughs> it means that uh, there are no rights, so anyone can uh, download the publication oh, for sure. free, can use it, but can uh, remix and uh, uh, redefine and republish, recognizing the author. It's going under the Creative Commons license. Okay. So, and this is the ethos in which uh, the Lenses project is working. Everything we are doing, uh, even we are publishing some cases, data or learning resources, are within this. To help achieve a faster diffusion of the knowledge and the knowledge sharing. So maybe, but um, yeah, <laughs> we no, will absolutely. talk about this a, a bit later. Yeah, but I, absolutely. I mean, all the stuff we're using is um, either our research or existing research. So absolutely. I'll look forward to your comments on it later. Thank you very much.